lot of people think that the money is going to make them who they want to become. The relationship is going to make them who they want to become. The baby is going to make them who they want to become or whatever it is that they're manifesting. The house, you know, the success, the accolade, the Forbes 30 under 30 or whatever. And it really is not. It is just the becoming on the path there that makes you who you are. My question is about the subconscious rule that says it keeps you safe. The part where you associate your dream life with negativity spoke to me. I do feel like something bad could happen or I feel super guilty for wanting that dream life. Most people from my family have had quite a tough life, but as much as I had my fair share of trauma... I still feel like I've had it better. There's always a guilt that comes up with that, of feeling like, oh, but my trauma is not as bad as other people's trauma. And so you feel guilty around that and you feel like you're not deserving of healing or release because someone in your family had it worse or someone you know had it worse. And so that could be a trap that we get ourselves into that really evokes that guilt within us to keep us trapped, okay? I feel so much guilt for having it better or even thinking that my life is actually better and will only get better. Why can't I feel worthy or lucky that I'm deserving of happiness, to have it better, to have it all? A part of me feels like it's just about time things are going to go sideways for me, just like the rest of them. But a huge part of me doesn't believe that. I feel like I deserve happiness and I can and will have it all. But I can't shake the feeling off. There's always some resistance to feeling good. Either I feel guilt or that I don't deserve it or that it's just a matter of time before all the good gets bad. It's like I'm always living anxious, on edge when I'm actually in a wonderful place. I can't seem to enjoy the good because of negative thoughts. Why do I feel this way? How do I get through this? How you get through this, we're going to get into. I want to speak more on why do I feel this way? So you feel this way because, see, when you see others struggle when you're growing up, and especially when you experience trauma of your own, this can definitely make you feel unsafe when it comes to living your dream life. Because what ends up happening is after struggling for so long and experiencing trauma and so much struggle in your childhood, what most of us do is we create a program in our subconscious minds of normalization around this reality. And so we see this reality as being our normal. We see this reality as familiar. Even if it's technically unsafe, it is still familiar. And what is familiar to the subconscious mind is going to be seen as the safest option. And what is unfamiliar, which is you living a life released of this guilt, released of shame, healed, whatever, transformed, right? Released of all the beliefs that no longer serve you, feeling worthy and deserving and living your best life is unfamiliar. And anything that is unfamiliar can feel really scary and can feel really unsafe. And It's hard to feel worthy and deserving of happiness, especially if if you've been taught and conditioned over many, 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 many lives, including this life or many years, including this life, generational, right? This can be something that's passed on generationally where your entire family is struggling with something and has been for a really long time. Maybe this is coming from a past life. Where life is a struggle, it's a belief, it's a condition, it's a, it's a program where life is a struggle. And if you're not struggling, then you're doing something wrong. So it's that belief of life being a constant struggle. And you may feel guilty also when you're healing this because you feel like in the healing of this, you're going to leave people behind. That somehow by you letting this go and you transforming and you healing this, that you're going to leave other people behind in that place of struggle. And you now know that energetically, even at the very least energetically, according to the law of transmutation, that this just simply isn't true. That by you releasing yourself of this, you letting this go, you cutting cords with this hardened belief, this program that life is a constant struggle, that you are actually healing not only yourself, but also your lineage and also past lives. We're going to talk about this in module six because there's beliefs that can come on the generational level, the past life level, and the core level, which core refers to this lifetime. 
And so when you do this healing, you are literally freeing the people around you. Now, they have a choice, of course, in seeing that, in taking that in as evidence that what their reality is, is not the truth of who they really are, that they are infinite potential in human form, that they can be, do, and have everything that they want, right? But we all have choice in the matter, and we all have lessons to learn, law of relativity, And so you get to, via free will, release yourself from these programs. And bringing especially like the feeling of safety in your body as you do this and normalizing the unfamiliar is going to be the key for you. But again, bring this to the release phase, bring this to the rewire phase because you're going to have a lot of tools in there for exactly how to let this go. So I just wanted to bring this into your awareness of why you're feeling this guilt. It's nothing wrong with you. You're not doing anything bad. You're not a bad person. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. It's just that you feel like you're leaving people behind and also you're entering unfamiliar, uncharted territory. So bringing safety into your body and doing some of that somatic work that we're going to do when it comes to the release phase is really going to help you anchor in that wherever you're going on this path of your dream life is safe for you to experience. I love that, Holly. Imagine if you had cancer, you wouldn't feel guilty about wanting to be healed just because another's cancer is a higher stage than yours. Yeah. And also remember in the law of relativity, every soul came here to learn certain lessons. So we cannot impose our own meaning on what we think this means about us when it has nothing to do with us. Because this soul is experiencing something that they're here to experience and heal on their own. And it's not your responsibility to heal that for them. My question relates to the never ever give up and don't use the maybe it's not for me line. What if some path I'm pursuing is truly not meant for me and the universe is showing me rejection so that I recalibrate and reroute my inner GPS? So at what point do I keep pressing on and when do I realize that this isn't where I'm supposed to be heading? Who here has a similar question? This one is very popular and I judge it just by like sometimes I'll scroll and I'll see some questions have a lot of likes on them and a lot of comments. It's kind of like how I see like the voting system of who, which question is like dying to get answered. So this is one of them. And I'm curious how many of you guys are trying to figure this out? Like at what point do you actually give up, right? At what point do you keep going when you're just like, when it's fucking hard and you're just, there's so much resistance coming up. Like how do we know what the difference is? There is a huge difference between the what and the how here. So what I'm referring to when I say never, ever, 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 ever give up is referring to the what. So by what is, I mean, your desire, right? Your desires, your true heart's desires are meant for you always and forever. So if you have a desire of building a million dollar business and it's a true heart's desire and you're so excited about it, but the last six businesses of yours have not worked out, you might think that the desire itself is no longer meant for you. But that's just not the fucking truth. That's where people give up far too easily is when it comes to the what. But the how, some people get really stuck in the how where they think that there's only one way to get to that outcome and they keep revisiting and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going and the universe is trying to recalibrate and reroute them, but they keep being stubborn and they're like, no, it has to work out this way. Most people give up because they're confused by the how and they think the reroutes and recalibrations are signs that the desire isn't meant for them when in actuality it's just a sign that the way it currently is coming about isn't meant for them. Here's how you can determine if the how is no longer working for you. For example, I wanted to create a successful business for myself. I wanted to experience both time freedom and I also wanted to help change people's lives. It's pretty broad, right? It's pretty general. You can create a lot of businesses that help you do this. You can create a lot of products. You can create a lot of services that help you accomplish this, right? There's there's a myriad of ways for you to accomplish this desire. For me, it was beach body versus manifestation babe. One, I felt incredibly drained every single day, 
just at some point, every day it drained me. It exhausted me. I was so uninspired. I was so overwhelmed. And if I wasn't careful about understanding the difference between the what and the how, I may have taken that example as a sign that business is not for me, that I am not meant to experience time freedom and being able to change people's lives because my beach body business wasn't thriving and wasn't successful. And at least to my standards, to some people's standards, it may have been very successful. I have really high standards, so it wasn't successful to me. And I felt absolutely drained. I feel I felt uninspired. I felt super exhausted, super overwhelmed. Just I felt like I was going through a mud. And the moment that I started manifestation, babe, again, keeping the same what in mind, it's the same overarching vision. I wanted to build a business that gave me time freedom and allowed me to help a lot of people. When I started manifestation, babe, it just felt so joyful. It wasn't easy, but it felt easy, if that makes sense. It was like I was inspired. I was lit up. I was just on fire. I was so creative. I kept creating and creating and creating. It was just so joyful for me to do this business, to build this, to build this business. And so that's what the difference is. It's not the what, it's the how. And most people give up the what because they get frustrated with the how. And again, this is like such a common theme as you guys are noticing by now. The how is not your job. (laughs) The how must be released. There are so many details that you're completely unaware of that are working in your favor. And the recalibrations and reroutes that are happening are happening for the how and not the what. So let's say that you are someone who's currently feeling that way about some sort of path that you're on. Are any of you guys feeling like drained, uninspired, exhausted by the way that you're doing something right now on the way to getting to a what? An outcome. If so, my biggest recommendation is for you guys to take a break. And that's what I did with Beachbody. If you guys remember, I went to go get a nine to five job because I wanted to give myself a break. I didn't want to struggle financially. I wanted to have money to live off of. Even though I was living on my grandma's couch, I still bought my own food. I paid for my car, paid for gas. Like I still had expenses. And so I didn't want to put that burden on my family. And so I got a job, but I let myself have a fucking break. I took probably, I would say three months off for me to just figure shit out between actively working beach body and actively working manifestation babe i just allowed myself to take a break to take a few months off of actively manifesting this goal and i gave myself space to be fully open and see what else is out there for me and through giving myself permission to just you know breathe give up temporarily again temporarily it's not actually giving up just like just give yourself some space. You'll see that what you're getting wrapped up about is the how, not the what. Okay. And then ever since I gave myself that break, guys, I stepped into a freaking how that was way more in alignment with me and clearly is still working for me. And I enjoy and I love, and it's my passion. And though I change and tweak certain things about it here and there, it's still consistently something so in alignment with me. And that's because I gave myself space. If I still was like, no, Beachbody is the only way, right? I'd be fucking miserable by now. If you don't want a job, you don't have to have a job. (laughs) I'm not telling you guys that the way that it happened to me is how it's supposed to happen to everybody. So I'm not saying the key is to get a nine to five job. No, 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 no. That's just my path. That's what helped me give myself a break. For you, it might just be on a mental level. It might just be taking the pressure off mentally. For me, it had to be mentally, physically, emotionally, because I was just done with it. Like I just, I just found another way for me to have a break. For you, it just might be like mentally, I don't want to think about it for a couple weeks and just see what happens and see what comes from that space that you create for yourself. How do you let go, surrender, release the attachment to the thing you're trying to manifest. Okay. This is a very interesting concept. 
that I've obviously talked about in MBA, but I just want to go, I want to expand on it. I want to repeat some things and I want to go slightly deeper. Here is the paradox of it all, but also the truth of it all. What you have to realize is that the thing that you are after is very much so a state of being or a feeling that you are after, plain and simple. And what I have noticed in my journey, because I wanted to make this a podcast episode, I just didn't know how to formulate it into words because it literally feels like a three minute podcast episode. I might just put it out because it's just, this is what it is, is that I don't feel any different today than when I did on my grandma's couch on a moment by moment basis. Yes, my reality is different. I have a lot more comforts and luxuries and all those things. But how I feel is actually exactly the same as how I feel today, having access to lots of resources, lots of options, a beautiful life. And why I say this is because manifestation is truly about the journey. And it's about cultivating the feeling cultivating that peace now. So back when I was on my grandma's couch, I was a professional at cultivating that peace. Whatever it is that I thought that my dream life was going to give me, I knew that I had to be that now. And the thing is, is that when you're being it now, it no longer matters whether you have it or not. That's what's so trippy. And when you actually get it, this is what fucks people up. They think that when they finally get it, because remember, you're maintaining the vibrational frequency throughout the whole process, okay? If you're not embodying the journey now, if you're not embodying those feelings now, you're not going to get there, right? So you're never really going to experience what I'm talking about. But because you are so good at understanding now that you have to embody that frequency now, And what people think is that when they finally receive their manifestation, it's going to make some radical like change in how they feel. It's going to make some radical change in what they believe about themselves. It's going to make some radical change in like all my problems are fixed. That's it. And yes, that initial feeling like that initial, like, let's call it like, I don't know, this is a very weird analogy. I'm so sorry. It's because this, this was a, topic of conversation this morning in a very weird way with a friend of mine. It's like popping an ecstasy pill or MDMA pill where you have that high, high that you feel for, I don't know, 12, 24 hours. I don't don't know how long it lasts. It's been a very long time since I experimented with that. And you, you feel bliss the fuck out. You're like, oh my God, the business. Oh my God, I made my first 100K month. Oh my God. I said, yes, I got proposed to, oh my God, I got pregnant. Oh my God, like whatever it is. And that feeling that high is going to fade and you're going to go back to your foundational vibrational level. And it's just going to feel normal. It's going to feel like any other day in your life. And a lot of people get up by that because they're like, I thought that was going to fix everything. I thought I would feel that high forever. I thought that that thing meant I'm going to feel that way forever. And it doesn't. You just feel normal. You just feel like it's any other day in your life. Okay? So you have to understand that it's about cultivating the normalization of having it now. And so how do you surrender? Is by understanding that it's an I want you, but I don't need you energy. That is a very potent energy to be in. It's understanding that you're already happy and it's a decision. Let me tell you, it's a fucking decision. You're happy and at peace whether you have it or not. And think about how hard that is to embody, which is why very few people. I'm teaching you in MBA how to get what you want and also I hope you've seen by now why so few people have what they want because it's not that simple. It's not that easy. It's easy and simple, but your ego really battles all of these concepts 
all of these things, all of these concepts, it really battles them. And so MBA is about being consistent and about rising above and about letting go and about surrendering all of these energies that we think are so cute to put on Instagram and talk about on Instagram, but very few people are living it. And so I'm encouraging you to start living this because I'm telling you, this is the absolute truth. When you want something, but you don't need it, it's in that energy that everything manifests. And how to help you with that energy is to get busy, okay? If you're just sitting there and just moping around and wondering why you don't have what you want yet, you're not going to get it. But if you're like, okay, eventually I'm going to have it. I know because I'm a powerful creator, I intended on it. I work through the things, the blocks, the whatever that is holding me back. And now I'm just going to go have fun. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to go to my job or I'm going to work on my business. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to go on dates. I'm going to go out with my friends. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that and just live my normal life. And stay busy with it because it's about the journey of who you are becoming rather than the thing making you who you are. A lot of people think that the money is going to make them who they want to become. The relationship is going to make them who they want to become. The baby is going to make them who they want to become or whatever it is that they're manifesting. The house, you know, the success, the accolade, the Forbes 30 under 30 or whatever. And it really is not. It is just the becoming on the path there that makes you who you are, where that accolade in the end, that's so nice to have. I'm telling you, so nice to have. It's very sweet. It's very delicious. But like with any good dessert, at some point you're like, (laughs) take this away from me. It's too much. I'm oversaturated, right? Like I don't need this anymore, right? It's fine, whatever. And another way I like to look at it is, Imagine you are flying to Paris and you're on a first class flight to Paris and you get on the plane and you just know that eventually you're going to get to Paris. You have a pilot, a flight crew, a plane, you have everything provided for you to get to Paris that you don't have to think about. You don't have to think about the altitude, the speed, the direction that you're flying in. As a passenger, you literally, that's not your job. But your job is to enjoy the flight there. Think about it. It's first class. So you got champagne, lie flat seats. You got jammies, right? You can read a good book, watch a good movie. The screen is bigger, right? There's a lot of luxuries that are offered in first class. And so you're enjoying it while you are getting there. And Yes, absolutely. On the other hand, you can stress the whole way, wondering, is the pilot awake? Did he drink enough coffee? Oh my God, are we going the right direction? Oh my God, what if there's a storm? Oh my God, is this plane going to fall? Oh my God, there's turbulence. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You can absolutely have a horrendous experience in the path there. Either way, you're going to Paris, right? Either way, the universe is taking you there. But are you enjoying it or are you making it a miserable experience? Some people choose to make manifestation a miserable experience. Some people choose to enjoy the journey there. I'm telling you, you're going to be a lot happier when you enjoy the journey there. Because absolutely, you can force manifest things. It happens. But actually keeping it and actually being happy and actually being fulfilled by what you're manifesting is through enjoying the journey there. This is the same with when you want a person romantically, they can feel when you need them. Mm Mm-hmm. I had a moment where I energetically broke up with Brennan when we were together for about a year. And I just, in my mind, I said, F- you, I want you. I don't need you. And if someone better comes along, I'm fucking jumping on that. <laughs> and I said that to myself. This is a decision I made to myself. He never knew this. But did he feel it? Oh, yes, he felt it. He felt that energetic shift. He's like, oh my God, I am losing her. And a relationship got stronger after that. It's a whole nother story, but I'm telling you, that energy applied to everything in life is so powerful and potent. It's like if you want to grow your following on Instagram, 
if you are approaching or any social platform, if you're approaching it as like, I need more followers, I need more engagement, I need, right? More whatever views. <laughs> People feel that and they don't want to follow you. So when you're like, I'm just going to live my life, I'm going to do my thing. Yeah, I want more followers, but I don't, I don't need them to enjoy my social media game. I'm going to post what I want in my stories. I'm going to post what I want on my feed. I'm going to say what I want. Potent energy. Hi, Catherine. I'm so stuck on the hierarchy of change. How do I change my identity? Is it simply just a decision? How do I embody this new identity? Once I change at the identity level and start to reprogram the beliefs, how do I avoid being overwhelmed by this process? There are so many things I want to manifest, abundance, confidence, being seen, releasing weight, healing my relationship with my body, thriving business, et cetera, loving MBA so far. Thank you. Yes, it is simply a decision. So when you make a decision, you alter the timeline of your life, whether you realize it or not. So when you decide that your new self image or identity is you know, whatever it needs to be in order for you to manifest those things. So whatever falls, I am, you are actually instantly shifted. The only thing is, is that our nervous systems don't always instantly shift with the energy. So that's why we work on a mind, body, spirit level, because there's the energetic shifts that happen just like this. Literally, the moment you think of something, it's already done. That's why we say it's already done. According to the universe, there is no time. Time is a human construct, right? Time is for the mind. The mind is what creates time. And, you know, there's also the mental level and then there's the physical level. So on the physical level in our bodies, we might not feel it to be true yet, which is why it can take repetition. It can take practice. It can take baby steps. Baby steps are really powerful. This is why I talk about how quantum leaps are not in the big, enormous action steps that you take, though those are valuable. And yes, in some cases, you're going to be taking massive leaps. Like you're going to just go from like A to point Z and like zero to 100 real quick. And sometimes that's going to be the case. But most of the time, it's in the baby steps. It's literally like, for example... You know, the version of you who um, has already released the weight, if they go to bed at 9 p.m. and they eat, you know, really healthy breakfast, whatever healthy means for you, whatever works for your body, you know, at 9 a.m. every single day, then it's every single day just being like, okay, today my job is to go to bed at 9 p.m. So I'm going to go to bed at 9 p.m. Okay, today my job is to eat a very healthy breakfast because the version of me who already has XYZ or is XYZ, they would eat a healthy breakfast today. So that's what I'm going to do. It's in those baby steps because eating that healthy breakfast every single day over 100 days, 200 days, 300 days, getting enough sleep, going to bed at 9 p.m. or whatever it is for you, every single day compounded over time is the quantum leap. Okay. Those tiny little action steps is what allows your nervous system to calibrate so that it doesn't get overwhelmed and freak out. I know I mentioned this on Instagram in a post, but before I got here to um, Africa, to Rwanda and to Kenya, I was upper limiting like crazy. My nervous system was so out of whack for the last month to the point where I started manifesting weird body things things in my business, things in my relationship, things at home, just all kinds of weird stuff started to come up. And it's because sometimes you are a little too fast, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, quantum leaps is something to celebrate. It's awesome. Um, Obviously, my team and I quantum leaped in this last launch, which is so exciting Um, It's a huge celebration for us, and I'm really, really proud of us, and I'm really grateful to each and every single one of you guys who helped us make it happen, and of course, now you guys get to benefit from it, and you get to benefit from this program, so lots of great stuff, but it's like, my body wasn't ready for so much so fast, like so many things manifested so quickly, so there is value in the baby steps, there is value in going slow, I think that for so many people, they put way too much emphasis on like, I need the car tomorrow. 
I need the business to be at seven figures by 2 p.m. today. Or I need to get married by Monday. And I need to have a child by Tuesday. And I need to move into a mansion by Wednesday. And it's like, you know, we celebrate that when people, you know, have these crazy, you know, goals manifested so quickly. It's so celebrated. So we think that if we're not doing that, then we're doing something wrong. But you're not doing anything wrong if you're going slowly too. And there are some things that are manifesting for me this year that have been on my list since 10 years ago. And am I shaming myself for that? Absolutely not. It's okay for something to be on your vision board for a decade, right? You're going to manifest this stuff when you're ready for it. So that being said, identity is an instant thing that happens because it's so close to the soul level. And once you make that decision, it's a matter of you approaching your life from the identity level. Because the moment you decide, I am successful, You are going to ask yourself every single day in the tiniest little things that you do, the version of me who's already successful, what are they going to eat for lunch? What are they going to read today? Are they going to engage in this argument with a stranger on Instagram today? Are they going to read the comment section on TikTok, which can I just tell you, one of the most toxic comment sections right now is probably TikTok. It used to be YouTube. I know there's a lot on Facebook and Instagram, but holy shit, TikTok, people love to argue. There is great content on TikTok. I love TikTok for the creators and the actual content, but holy fuck, like I can ignore the comment section and be happy for the rest of my life because you can get so caught up in it and just argument, argument. It's like, no matter what it is, Mother Teresa can go on TikTok and make like a TikTok about saving the planet you know, saving the world. And it's like, someone's got to argue. So maybe you can ask yourself with the version of me, you know, who's already successful when they get caught up in the TikTok comment section, right? So like little things like that. Um, And then you can ask yourself, like, what are they choosing to believe about their worth before they start their work day? Right? So you can approach it on those other levels, but you're coming from the identity level. You're coming from the version of me, right? The be, do, have model. First you be, I am, that version of you does certain things and then you have certain things. 